lot and have people look at it. We usually run about an hour and a lot of people have extra time on their hands, especially on the weekends um, because they're not supposed to go anywhere. So <clears throat> I just encourage you to share that as well. Okay, anything else? We'll wait a couple more minutes. We got about 36 or so uh, oh, hi, people. Hey, Yay. Nikki. Nikki's watching from Tennessee. <laughs> She's one of my favorites. Well, you're all my favorites. When I learned that lesson from having lots of kids, you're all my favorites. That's right. I have lots of favorites. Hi, Roberta. Hi, Chris. Yeah, hi, hi, Chet and Jane. How do you know who's... Hi, Sierra. How you doing, girl? Can't wait to see you again and give you a big hug when all of this nonsense <laughs> is passed. That's right. Good morning, Bendigs. Bendigs. Good morning, Bush right. family. How do you see who's on there? How do you know? This is incredible. <laughs> If I'm giving you hey, you're giving me technology, technology right. tips, we're really, I'm this, doing good. This Nixon on, behind, Dan's right. on, Dan's awards are on. Hi, Shelly. <laughs> All right, so we always kind of just um, goof around a little bit in the beginning, give people time to, to get on here before we um, really get going. We are going to enter into worship this mm -hmm. morning. We are going to take communion. Yeah. Um, I'm excited to hear the message. So was it Thursday or Friday? I spent a good two hours on the phone with a friend who I haven't talked to in a long time, and that was nice. And I came away from that phone call, and I went downstairs, and I just started talking to Jason about, you know, um, oh, just so many good things, just about the love of Christ and how we really, we, we really have an issue getting it on the inside and self-rejection and, um, well, self-rejection just runs rampant in our country and it's running rampant in our church. And so, so many people use good works mm -hmm. to try to to try to show evidence of the love of mm. Christ without really mm. receiving the love of Christ, yeah. like through and through. And we started having this whole conversation. He just sat there smiling, kind of like what he's doing right now, just the whole time. And I am talking like a mile a minute. I'm like preaching, right? And he, at one point I stopped and he said, yeah, you just preached my whole message from Sunday. So I'm excited to hear what the Lord is, has given him for this morning, especially because we just had like a whole kind of spontaneous conversation about it. Um, I love when the Holy Spirit does that. It's just it's just confirmation. It's just encouragement that we are pressing into his presence. We're hearing from heaven, um, and I'm excited to worship this morning. Amen. <clears throat> Let's open in prayer, uh, then we'll uh, we'll get into, we've got two worship songs. What we did this week, which we hadn't done in the past, is we did a post, uh, I think it was last night, we put up a post of what the worship songs were going to be. So you can join with us uh, and kind of put them on your phone. If you're watching on a different device, you can get the worship lyrics. I mean, if you want to stand where you are in your house, you can stand and worship. You can sit and worship. I encourage you to stand if you can. Uh, let's just really enter in and just take a few moments to be in his presence, whether it be through technology. God, I mean, nothing stops God from moving and working, and he can work in many different avenues. Let's open in prayer this morning, and I'm going to do a call to worship. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are and what you're doing. Father, we thank you uh, that your presence is so powerful to transform and to change our lives. And I thank you, Lord, that as we enter into your presence through worship and listening to your word and communion, that you will just pierce our hearts today. Pierce our hearts today, Father, with just a fresh revelation of who you are and what you've done. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. The call to worship this morning is from Psalm 18. It says, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Let's worship the risen king.
Will you take hold of that which I am pouring out? And will you, will you nurture those around you? Will you reach? Will you call? Will you bid them come? Will you be used by your Father in heaven? Yes. For he loves you. Yes. And he has created you for such a time. Right. He has no limit. church and as we as a body of believers cry out to you as we reach our hands we widen them and we say father have your way in us and have your way through us speak Lord, for your people are listening we are here we stand before you father and we say we will do what you tell us to do Lead us by your Holy Spirit, Father. We will walk in obedience. We are here, Father, and we will walk in obedience unto you. Father, pour out your power upon us, Father, that we can represent the greatness of your throne to a lost and dying world. That they might see you. That they might know the hope, the power, the love, those who believe that we would be light, that we would move with power, and that nothing would hinder your kingdom come, and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. I just want to repeat that last verse that we just sang. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared, The grave has no claim on me. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared, The grave has no claim on me. Jesus, yours, is the victory. Jesus is the victory. Father, we thank you for this time of worship. Father, as we begin to prepare ourselves for communion, Father, we just ask that your presence continues to burn strong in each and every one of us, in our homes, in our workplaces, wherever we are right now, right now, in our homes, in our living rooms, in our bedrooms, in our basements, wherever our best internet signal is. Father, you are present with us this morning, and we thank you for it. Thank you for your word. Thank you for sending your Son. And thank you for your Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us in these times of uncertainty where we can be certain in you, certain in what we need to do, certain in what we need to say, certain in who we need to speak to. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. amen. All right. I feel like... Um... I feel like I just want to speak to something for a minute. Um, there's The enemy has these schemes and he has these lies that he tells. And I feel like this week the conversation that we had had and what Pastor Jason is going to preach on today is about perfect love. And um, these lies, they are like handcrafted for each and every one of us. And so, um, you know, lies that are spoken in darkness and that remain in darkness have power. And so I encourage, I always encourage my children, and I'm going to encourage you, church, that you need to get with someone, and you need to say, this is what I'm, this is what I'm believing, and this is what I'm hearing. And you say it out loud so that you can pull it into the light, and you say it out loud, and then you say, no, in the name of Jesus. And you, you pull it out into the light, and then you trample on it with the truth. You trample on it. We don't, you don't fight a battle in the silence of your own mind, because you will not win that way. And so um, I just... It's like I know, I know right now that some of you have been struggling and have been struggling with this time in quarantine. In particular, it's really, God is using this time to 
bring to the surface impurities, to bring to the surface some of these things. And because we're having to slow down, it's like we can hear the thoughts because it's not so crowded up there because things aren't as busy as they normally are. And so I know that some of you are, are having the sense of if, if, I'm not, if I'm not being productive, then I'm not worthy of love. Um, I'm not worthy of love, and so I have to work harder. I have to do more, or I'm not worthy of love. And I say that is a lie in the name of Jesus. That's a lie. You are not loved for what you do. You are not loved for what you do. Um, if you're a servant, if you're one of those people who just serves others, and you've been not feeling well, and you haven't been able to serve as much as you want to, and as much as you are normal, you normally do, and you're, the, the enemy sneaks in and he says, they don't care about you. They don't care about you. And it's because you're not serving. It's because you're being lazy. That's a lie in the name of Jesus. That is a <clears throat> lie in the name of Jesus. Your rest in him is not laziness. Your rest is not laziness. Rest is faith. Rest is faith. That we trust his love enough to just sit in his love, just to be in his love. Some of you, because you haven't been able to create, you haven't been able to be as creative, although I have a feeling some of the creatives are really enjoying this time. Um, but some of you, if you're if you are a if you're a producer, a creative producer, and you haven't been able to create, then you're feeling that insecurity of I'm not being who I am, the enemy will come right in and say, you're not worthy. Because you're not being you, because you're not producing, because you're not creating the way you would be able to, or because you're underperforming, you're not worthy. It's a lie. It's a lie in Jesus' name. And um, this is, I'm going to end with this, and it leads into communion. My favorite times, my favorite times with my children, and my favorite times with the Lord, are times when I'm just with them. They're not asking me questions. They're not asking me for snacks, and they're not asking me to meet their needs, and I'm not asking them to show me their homework. I'm not asking them to show me the things they've done, their chores. I'm not asking them for anything either. We're just together. And there are a lot of those times I, I draw them in, and I cuddle them, and I kiss them. I am big on just, there's no social distancing within the walls of our house. I'll tell you, that is, that is the truth. Um, I bring them in, and I just want to be with them. And that's those are my favorite times with my kids. Those are their favorite times. And there's love that's being transmitted between us, from children to their mother and mother to their child. But those are the same times when I know that the Lord has done the greatest works in me is when I just rest in his presence. And I just allow him to love me. I allow that love to sink deep on the inside of me, and then I tell him how wonderful he is and how much I love him, the person of Jesus. And as we come to the communion table, that's what I want. I want y'all to come. I want y'all to come to the communion table remembering, remembering that he came to the earth and he was fully man. Remembering that he stood before people, people like us, people, people who were filthy, dirty, and diseased, people who were un, unworthy, air quotes, to the dead. And he stood before them, and he did not withhold his hand from them, not for a second did he withhold his hand from them. So as I come to the communion table today, I'm going to close my eyes, and I'm going to see and I'm going to see him reach his hands out to me today. And I'm going to see him take my face in his hands. And I'm going to remember him this morning. The Lord brought to my remembrance this in the book of Joshua, chapter 1. It's something I've been reading and we've been doing as a family and part of our morning devotionals. This, you know, Joshua, the first chapter, verse 13, says, Remember... The word which Moses, a servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God is giving you rest and giving you this land. So there's this parallel here that they're talking about is that 
There's no striving in getting the land. There's rest in it. There's rest when we're relying on Jesus, when we're letting him do the work, when we're letting him, we're relying on him, do what he needs to do. There's this rest that is available to us in this time, like no other. There's really, I mean, all the years that I've been, 43 years, I've never had a time to be able to really take a step back and have this time of rest and maybe not have as much productivity. But the Bible promises us that even as we rest and God gives us rest, he still gives us the land. He still gives us that land. He doesn't ever stop taking ground. Amen. Amen. So if you have your communion elements, we're going we're gonna to transition here into communion. And as I was, I had a different scripture this morning uh, for communion, but I'm going to go with John chapter 6 and verse 35. It says, And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Yes. He who comes to me shall never hunger. He who believes in me shall never thirst. Never hunger. Never thirst. And all this concern about grocery stores being empty shelves, God's promise says we never hunger and we never thirst in him and in who he is. There may be times of physical hunger. There may be times of physical thirst. But in him, in the spiritual sense, we shall never hunger or thirst again as we keep our eyes focused on him. This time of communion is a time for reflection, for repenting, and rejoicing. I know we didn't do this last week, but I just want to give you a minute to just reflect right there in your house, wherever you are, sitting on your couch. Just take a minute to reflect. Let him show you the things in your life that needs to change. As Liz was saying, the things that are bubbling up that he is looking to purify in your life. The process of purifying gold is just continuing to burn out and get rid of the imperfections that are in it. And it becomes more and more pure. This process of sanctification that begins to occur. It's without mm. striving. But without striving. Without striving. Without striving. As the Lord showed, as those things bubble up, mm. who is it that, that that takes the sieve or whatever they right. use and, and pulls the impurities out? It's Jesus. It's, it's Jesus. They come up, and I mean, you just hand them over to Jesus. Right. That's what this is. Yeah. This is time. That's what repenting is. is we're just handing it over. Turning away from it, saying, Jesus, take it. Have it. I can't do it on my own. I need you to help. So just take a moment right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we turn our hearts to you. We thank you for your body and your blood, broken and shed for us, for every one of our imperfections, to be made pure. Because of your love, we thank you for it. Thank you. Thank you. The Bible says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. The Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. We had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which was broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us partake. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you drink the, or as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Let us partake. Father, we thank you for this time of worship. Father, I thank you for what you're doing in each and every one of our lives. We worship you today. We thank you for your saving grace. That beautiful, amazing grace. Thank you. We worship you and we thank you in Jesus' name. 
Amen. 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 All right, guys. Thank you, worship team. Well, some announcements. I don't really know how many announcements we have at the moment. Uh, really, there's currently no events scheduled uh, on campus. I know there's some stuff out on Facebook about the uh, Good Friday service at Erie First that we are participating with or joining with. I've not heard anything different about that, but that's continuing as far as I know uh, to look like it's going to be on. I'm sure more information will come out, and we'll be sure to let you know. Uh, currently, I believe the stay-at-home order for Pennsylvania, at least, is through April 6th, which really is through next Monday. So, not sure totally what we're going to be doing on Palm Sunday, which is actually next Sunday, believe it or not. Palm Sunday, which means Easter is just two weeks away. Uh, we have to do it here. We'll put some palms up up there. Um, not we sure might, how we'll. We might not actually. Do uh, we that. might not actually do it. Yeah, I'm not sure how we'll do that or what that will look like. Um, but I think really the only announcement we have is we've been putting up. Uh, maybe you can share some of the content that you've been putting up on Facebook about some of the things we've been doing as a family mm -hmm. through Seeds Family Worship and some other stuff. I know we mentioned it last week. Yeah. But it might just be good for just to remind people. Um, well, I'm going to have a really fun video that's going to be posted either this afternoon or tomorrow. Um, and that'll be my final post about Seeds Family Worship. Um, I can't promote it any more than I, <laughs> than I already have. Um, but it's been such a blessing to our household. So I encourage you to go to their website and check it out um, for your family. Um, it helps with just Bible memorization, just getting the Word of God um, in your home playing in your home. I know we have two little girls in particular who are just all about music. And they walk around with like Bluetooth headphones and they each have an iPhone, one of our you know, one of our phones and they're always listening to music. Um, and they'll find music to listen to from different shows or different things. Um, and we really want them to have the word of God. So that's what we want them listening to. So they are very happy to listen to Seeds Family Worship. It's great music. It is. So um uh, we've been doing that. Last week, Hebrews 11.6, man, this has just been, for me, this has been like the scripture of quarantine. Like this has been the, the, the theme for me personally and in our house. Um, and it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so I get, the question I have for our church family is, are you diligently seeking him? And I could say, are you seeking him? Yeah? Are you seeking him diligently? Mm -hmm. And what that looks like for each one of our, each one of us and each one of our households is different. There is, we have to throw off this idea of what that looks like and ask the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's diligently seeking him. Mm -hmm. It's not looking at, oh, well, this is what the Ackermans do, so this must be the it thing. Mm -hmm. There is no it thing. This is what the Holy Spirit has led us, and we're sharing it um, as a prompt you know, as a, we're sharing it because it's good, um, but we're not sharing it that, that you sh have to do it, um, or that you even should do it. Our heart for our church family, um, is the same as it is for our children. Um, we, we honestly, we view you guys the same. That, that is not, that's not condescending mm -hmm. and don't, it's just, it's love, True. right? Um, when the Lord called us to this, we knew this is to be as we as we disciple our children and we truly are discipling our children in love and we're growing them up in love um, and our, the biggest thing is know god know him for yourself know him you know a yes to my one to one child about something is not a yes to the other child and that's so important to grasp um, is that we have there's no hard fast rules in our house I mean, that is a true statement. There are no hard, fast rules in our house. There are, there are principles that we live by. We honor one another. We respect everyone, whether they are two or 43. Everyone gets respected. Everyone matters in our home. How they feel matters, what they say matters. Um, they don't all have the same amount of weight or authority, but they matter. Um, where I'm going with this? Hold on, let me remember. This is how this goes. Um, where I'm going with this is we encourage our children, know God, know him for you. What does he have for your life? What is the calling on your life? Because what is okay for one might not be okay for you. Just because one child 
gets to do this thing at this age doesn't mean that all the children get to do that thing at that age. Um, because what's good for one is not always good for the other. And we know them personally. We know their heart. We know the plans and purposes that God has planned for them through prayer. We're always seeking that. We're always refining that for each of our children. And we're encouraging them to find it for themselves. So, in this time, I we can't overstate how much our prayers for you are that you are seeking him for you. Lord, what is it? What do you have for us? This time of quarantine is just, it's almost like a forced Jesus went away to be with his father. Mm. You know, and Americans, goodness gracious, we go so fast. We move at a pace that not even the, the whole rest of the world, we're faster than the whole rest of the world. Um, if you bring people over from Europe or South America, anywhere, they come here. We move at a faster pace. Everything is go, go, go. And we're sacrificing. We're sacrificing relationships. We're sacrificing intimacy. We're sacrificing as Americans, as a culture. We're sacrificing things mm -hmm. and we don't even know mm -hmm. that we're missing out on. Mm -hmm. So we go, we vacation in Europe. I've never been. But we go, we vacation in Europe. People go vacation in Europe. And, oh, the food is so amazing. And the culture is so... The pace. Is the so pace and the people <laughs> and all of these things. And then we come back. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like this time... This is unprecedented. This is a historical moment, you know, coronavirus 2020, whatever. I call it time of my father in heaven 2020. Mm. There are blessings everywhere in this. So that was my very long-winded encouragement yeah. to, um, to our church family. Are you seeking him diligently for you and for your family? Um, I'm happy to put out Seeds Family Worship and to talk about the things that we're discovering, because I love to share. I love to share what works. If I can, if I can help a family find something that works for them, great. Um, but ask the Lord. Ask the Lord what direction wants you to go. Um, another resource. I'll be I'll be doing a video um, and putting it out or a post about a couple other resources that we've come upon. You know um, that are blessing us in our home during this time. So those will be coming out on our posting on Instagram, posting on Facebook, and that's just our way of kind of trying to nurture you guys and connect with you guys and just put some stuff out there from our home and from our heart during this time and during the week. So again, because we're not gathering uh, in person, you know, on a Sunday morning, uh, giving is still an important facet of each and every one of our lives. Uh, so a couple of things I just wanted to mention. If you have a need of some kind, if you need prayer requests, whatever it is, please uh, email us at prayer at ecfchurch.org. We still have people coming in and out of the office. People are able to work remotely and from home. So we're getting those emails. We can communicate. We can forward those to the prayer team uh, who is working diligently uh, day in and day out, praying for every request that comes in. I know we normally put them on our uh, connection cards. We don't have connection cards. So send your prayer requests in to prayer at ecfchurch.org. Uh, and then from an offering perspective, again, you know, there's a lot of different ways we talked about last week to give. One, you could just, you know, if you don't have one of the offering envelopes that you normally have when you come to church, you can just send it in. Uh, you can send, I can drop mine off. You can send it in uh, to the church, and we've got people that are coming in a couple times a week that are able to count that and get a deposit. It may not come out of your account the same speed that it used to on a Tuesday, but whatever, you know, we're still working through that. You can call the church and work with Tammy or Jamie on the direct debit side if that's how you normally give. You can go to our website. And just click give. I believe it's on the top right hand corner. Uh, you just click give and then you walk through that process. Or you could text 84321. A dollar amount, you put it in there and then you, and you send that text to 84321. If you've done that before, you're done. If you did it for the first time, it'll take you just a few minutes to work through that. Uh, so I just want to read a quick scripture here because uh, now is the time to be generous. There are people in need, there are people uh, that have lost their jobs. I know government has just passed this massive. $2 trillion aid package to help families and small businesses and even churches and schools. And we're grateful for that. We're the $2 trillion that's coming. Whole other probably discussion that <laughs> we're not going to get into this morning. Uh, but in general, I uh, just wanted to know that this is a really time for the church to be generous in their giving uh, and, and how we get generate giving in our time and our efforts and our talents and everything. So I just want to read the scripture. First Peter 4 says, Above all, keep loving one another earnestly. Keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of yes. sins. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. 
as each has received a gift. We have the gift of Jesus. We've received this gift. Use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for every, every gift, every giver, Father, that's coming in. Father, I just thank you, Lord, that every bill is paid in everybody's personal family life as well as the church life. Father, thank you that we have a church of generous givers. We always have. Father, we believe we always will, Lord, as we are just distribution centers to do the work of your kingdom here on this earth. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that we continue to pray on earth as it is in heaven. And Father, we thank you that the floodgates are open to be able to distribute to those who are in need, to be able to do the things that you've called us in this church to go do. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, that reminds me, I want to thank the church family. There's yeah. been um, a lot of, last week I said something about peanut butter, about um, <laughs> getting peanut butter at the store when you have a family of 10 and it's, the limit is one. I just want to assure everyone we have plenty of peanut butter, um, but our church family is so sweet that they were oh, reaching wow. out to Chris Kidder and people were asking, what do they need? What do they need? And yeah. <clears throat> um, you guys have just been really sweet about making sure our big family has it. And we do. We have everything. We needed eggs. And Chris Kidder, boy, she set us up with enough eggs. We're good. Yeah. So God has provided um, for all of our needs. And um, shout out to, I think it was Ari Kuhn. Mm. Oh, Lord, what if I get the wrong sister? The Kuhn girls are sewing masks. Oh, I saw it on Facebook. Cool. So that is really awesome to see. Um, to see the youth sewing like the, the hospital masks. Yeah. Um, I love that. Um, there's so many ways that we can be led of the Holy Spirit to, um, to be generous to the, to the needs and the people around us. Yeah. So um, I just wanted to thank our church cool. family for checking in on us. Amen. All right, guys, I just have a, I have a message I want to share. Uh, we've, been, we've started this series last week. Uh, again, God always knows what's happening before it's going to happen. He has prepared our church for the series we were doing on Revival 2020 before. This was really preparing us and our hearts mm -hmm. and our repentance hearts and turning and seeking his face, not knowing anything of COVID-19 was coming. I mean, it was happening other places, but we didn't realize the impact it would have here uh, locally and domestically. And God was just preparing us. And then we started talking. I started believing that God was just saying, do a series called Jesus Is and then blank. So each week, we're going to talk about who Jesus is in some way, shape, or form. And what is it? And last year, Jesus is healer. And we talked about the man with leprosy. And then, of course, we were watching The Chosen. Uh, and I don't know if it was uh, sixth episode or whichever one it was, but it actually showed, mm -hmm. showed uh, the man with leprosy coming to Jesus and how Jesus healed him, like an actual visual representation of what we read in the Scripture. And it was just awesome. I encourage you to watch The Chosen uh, if you haven't done so already. It's a great thing to do. Uh, during this time of quarantine of not being able to go out. And then I opened up a book, uh, the Smith Wigglesworth book, and it was exactly talking about Jesus is healer, and they talked about the man being healed with leprosy. So God knows what we're going through, and I believe this week, Jesus is love. Jesus is love. The theme of this week is going to be exactly what's needed. It's a discussion that we've already prefaced that was going to happen. But before I get into that, I just want to say sometimes funny things happen at our home. Uh, actually quite often some people joke that we should have a YouTube channel that would have a million followers But we're not ready to be that out there. This is a this is enough for us at the moment <clears throat> uh, This is an on-ramp, but we've got this little girl named Ruby Lou and Ruby if you're watching hey girl I love you. You're awesome spunky amazing uh, Fiery and all that but we were I mean I don't even know if she was listening if she knew what the Jesus is like sermon series that we were doing but we were painting yesterday, so normally paint does not come out in our house no. on an ongoing basis, but periodically we'll just get paints out. we got all these little kids painting, and I should have brought it. Man, it's I should like have brought school. it. I should have brought her picture. So she wrote a picture. She drew a picture. She was painting this beautiful rainbow, I think she did, or a heart and all this stuff. And then she just started writing it with, with paint, Jesus is, and she started filling in the blank. And so two of them that she did, she says, Jesus is our Savior. Come on, this is a, she's six, right? Seven. Seven now, she just turned seven. Seven-year-old, Jesus is our Savior. And then I was like, man, girl, I was like, that's awesome, I love that. She's like, I got another one. So she makes another one, and she says, Jesus, Andy's going to love this one, Jesus is coming. Amen. She, yeah, I was like, oh my goodness, I said, Ruby. I was like, I'm just when? Like, when, Ruby, when? You know is God when? talking to you when? Like, I know the Bible says about, you know, oh, man, no one's going to know, know but. And when you're in the generation, the signs will be clear. And actually, we will know or have an idea of the generation that it is. And so I was like, 
through me. Like, you're prophetic. I know you are. You draw pictures during service of what mom's going to say before she says it. So, like, I need to know, like, when? She's like, tomorrow. I was like, <laughs> holy smokes, which means today. So, yeah. church, ah, okay, I'm not saying that. Don't get ready in that sense, but get ready in your hearts because yeah. he is coming. You know, Jesus is coming. And all these signs in the end of time, I'm not going to get into that today. And I'm learning, too, as, as, uh, as I'm uh, growing in this thing and what's happening in our times and being under, understand to, to see that. But I just found it awesome that our Ruby Lou, you know, Jesus is coming. So church, Jesus is coming. But today it is Jesus is love. Jesus is love. And I want to read verse 18 first. I'm going to be in 1 John 4. And we're going to look at verse 7 through 21. 1 John 4, 7 through 21. Based on the time, I don't know how long or how much we'll get through all of this. Don't preach but short. Don't preach short. That's always the message. But I want to read verse 18 first. And then I want to back up into the context of what leads up to verse 18 and show a few things that the Lord has just been revealing uh, to me in Scripture. So 1 John 4, if you have your Bibles or your app open, depending on how you're watching us, uh, in 18 it says, There is no fear in love. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. And so, so many times I'm just thinking, like, what does this mean? What does this mean? Perfect love casts out fear. Is it just like, okay, I just, you know, as, long, as soon as I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and he was perfect, and God is love, and so that's it, I'm good, I never fear again. Well, guess what? I don't know about you, but that didn't happen for me in my life. Like, there are still some times where I would have the sense of fear that I have to be proactively uh, uh, fighting against and asking Jesus to help me with. And what the Lord began to reveal to me, he says, back up and read the context of what we're talking about when we talk about this perfect love that casts out fear. So I want you to go back with me and start with me at verse 7. And I want to walk through uh, verse 7 up through 18, and I don't know how much further we'll get past that. It says, Beloved, let us love one another, for God is love. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So multiple times in here, he's talking about God is love. So this perfect love that casts out fear absolutely comes from God, for God is love. So we can't lose sight of that. Verse 9. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. So the very first part of this perfected love is God sending Jesus Christ to be our Lord and Savior down on earth as a perfect man, as love. Jesus is, I believe, Andy, you texted me the other day, love incarnate. Jesus is love incarnate. He is love. The Bible says in, in, in John 15, greater love is none, none than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. So Jesus is love. He was perfect love. He was, I mean, he was love incarnate. When he was on this earth, he showed nothing but love. And if you watch The Chosen, you read the, read the Gospels, all these things, you can see how Jesus was love. And so this is the first part of it, but it goes further. Verse 10. In this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins, or the payment or the atonement for our sins. So the, all of this love, this perfect love, starts and originates with God. Verse 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, here's the, here's the kicker, this is where it starts to, to turn, we also ought to love one another. Because of his love for us, and how great it is, and as we see it, and as we begin to accept it, and we begin to uh, recognize it in our life, it absolutely begins to turn our hearts towards the one to share that love with others, to show others that love, to show others how good and how faithful and how great that he is. It's because God loved us first. We begin to turn our, our eyes and our attention, not to ourselves, but to others. So watch this in verse 12. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love has been perfected in us. Look at that. If we love one another, that means when we begin to love one another, as we do that with the true heart and compassion of Jesus, it is, is revealing to me and to us through the scriptures that we now have truly been able to accept God's love in our life. And I want to talk a little bit about how do we begin to understand the accepting of God's love in our life. So it says that God abides in us and his love has been perfected 
in us. So I wrote down an equation. I love equations. So his love for us plus our love for others equals this complete and perfect love. And as I wrote it down, I was like, what does that mean? What does it look like? If you notice where our attention and when our, where our focus is, is our focus is on God's love towards us and then his love being passed through us to others. We never at any point during that, <clears throat> during this equation of perfected love, are we looking at ourselves. Mm -hmm. As we're looking at God and accepting his love and then sharing that love with others. And this, this, the term perfected in here, it's, it's a process. It's not like we're perfect. Mm -hmm. We are not perfect. No one's perfect at it. Only Jesus was perfect when he walked on this earth. So this perfected love is a process. Which means we need to constantly be in the process of understanding and accepting God's love in our life. And we have to be in a constant process of perfecting our love towards others. So verse 13 says this. It says, by this we know that we abide in him and he in us. So he starts talking about abiding. Because he has given us his spirit. His spirit is with us all the time. We have an amazing opportunity in this New Testament time to have the Spirit abiding with us wherever we go. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son, the Savior of the, world, of the world. Whoever confesses Jesus is the Son of God. God abides in him. So the first step to accepting God's love is we have to confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Like this is the, the essence of the gospel, accepting Jesus Christ as our Savior, what he did on the cross, that perfect love poured out for us. We can't even begin to really truly love others as God loves others until we begin to accept what Jesus did for our life. So God now abides in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. Again, uh, John, uh, the Apostle John has given us again, God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. Verse 17. Love has been perfected. Again, talking, going back to perfected. Among us in this, that we may have boldness, some versions say confidence, in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in the world. So what this is saying to, saying to me that I'm, as I'm reading this is as we acknowledge Jesus, as we begin to accept Jesus Christ in our life, in every area of our life, in the areas that we're struggling, in every single area, he begins to set us free in those areas, and then we are his hands and feet in this world. We are his hands and feet that go out to rely on God's love to be able to share God's love with others. And we have this confidence and boldness in the day of judgment that we've accepted him as our Lord and Savior, and we know that no matter what happens, he is with us and he is for us. And so then if you go to verse, uh, verse 18 where we started. It says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Okay, so check this out. So God is love. There's no fear in love. His perfect love operating through us is what drives out this fear. And it talks about fear being torment. Mm -hmm. How many of us have been like, when we're walking through fear in our life, does it feel like torment? It just grips us. It just pulls on us. And it's just this thing that we've just like, okay, I need to figure out what I need to go do about this. And this fear, we truly, we have to be reflective and repentant. Have we opened doors to fear? Have we been watching stuff we shouldn't be watching? Have we been doing things we shouldn't be doing? And repent and turn for those because this perfected love in us and through us is a process mm -hmm. of casting out this fear. Mm -hmm. And for years, honestly, for years I thought, you know, perfect love is Jesus. So if I just say, in the name of Jesus, fear be gone, amen, like that's it. And that is like part of it. That's like part of what we have to go do to cast out this fear. And then it's like, what I see is this two-step process is we do absolutely do that. We cast out the spirit of fear. But as fear tries to come upon us again, what we end up doing is we begin to look to serve others. We begin to look to say, I'm going to now begin to share God's love for us. Because that equation that I gave you before, his love for us, and I want to expand upon that equation. His love for us, once accepted, once we accept that love from him, turns our hearts to loving on others, which makes this complete and perfect love happen in our life. And... I'm telling you, as we do that, the spirit of fear, this fear challenge that we have, especially now in our lives, begins to fade away because our eyes are focused on him and our eyes are focused on others. Our eyes are focused on him and our eyes are focused on others. And so what I wanted to do this morning, and uh, I just want to give some practical ways and some things. I'm going to jump around a little bit. What are some ways? How do we do this? 
how do we begin to say, you know, the Bible's second commandment says, uh, you know, we have to love, love the Lord God with our heart, soul, mind, strength. And then it also says the second one is like it. We have to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, which means we first need to figure out how to accept and receive God's love for us first before we can go do this. And so how do we do this? How do we grow in God's love? How do we grow in this acceptance of God's love? And the thing we've been talking about it, rewarding of him who is, you know, those who are diligently seen. Get to know Jesus. Have this relationship with him. Accept him not just as your, as your Savior, but as your Lord in every area of your life. Seek him. Hide God's word in your heart. We've been talking about scripture memorization. Meditating on the promises of God. Truly, truly reflecting, intentionally reflecting on God's love for us. Mm -hmm. And I think that just opens up the floodgates when we do that, when we make that intentional about God's love towards us. And just picturing Jesus and what he's done and what he's, what he's done for us. And just meditating on that for a little bit. I know it's a meditation bad word, but if we meditate on God's word, it's a good word. Uh, and I just want us to meditate and take this week to meditate on God's love for you. Because Jesus is love. And we want fear to be cast out of our life. We want this perfect love to happen. We have to understand how to receive and how to accept God's love for us in our life. And the Bible promises that as we do that, this love begins to overflow out of our lives. And what happens is you can't help but begin to look at others and begin to see others in a different light and that they need God's love. They need Jesus' love as well. Um, this makes me think about paint. Mm -hmm. So he said, you know, we have paint in our house. We have actually an old paint cupboard with the aprons and the the paper and all the paints and it doesn't come out very often because we have a lot of kids and it's messy um and so i think about the paint and so we accept the lord as our savior we we have this moment where the holy spirit moves and breathes life into our spirit and we in that moment we believe we believe in this christ we believe his love is big enough for us and we say yes i'm gonna receive this and we receive it and then we put it in a cupboard, like we put our paint in a cupboard, right. and we don't bring it out very often. Mm. We don't use it, we don't apply it, we don't create with it. And so um, sometimes I feel like we come to acceptance of the love of God for us, but then we don't apply it. Mm. We don't apply it when we need it most. Sure. Some of us right. don't apply it when we need it most. Mm. And applying his love is meditating on it. Right. It's being... It's being nurturing and loving towards yourself in your weakness. Mm. Oh, so difficult. I'm not talking about being um, being uh, permissive in any way. I'm just talking about let's just be kind to ourselves. Let's receive the kindness of God mm. in our weaknesses. Mm. So often I am so good at applying God's love to others. It always applies to others. And if one of my children would come to me and say, I, I'm, I stink, you know, I just stink, I, I, I'm dumb, and then they just start speaking all this garbage out, I immediately will just know you are, you know, you are, you have a plan and a purpose. God loves you. I begin applying the love of God to them. Or a girl, a friend who's struggling in her motherhood or struggling in her marriage and really beating themselves up, boy, I swoop in with the truth of God's word and I preach it and I encourage them but when it comes to my own self I will sit literally in the dark and I I just try to I'm not able to battle sometimes for my own self and one of the greatest tools that I have found in growing in God's love for me and growing and applying it is to open my mouth and tell someone I need help I need help I tell him and then there's another friend who's just like, I need, I need help. Mm. Tell me the truth. Tell me, tell me I'm loved because there's a battle going on right now. When I sit in silence, when I sit, if you're sitting in silence, if you're under attack, or if we, we, we struggle so much sometimes to apply God's love in our moments of need. Mm. And that's where his love shines. Mm. That's where Jesus shined was mm. in the moment of greatest need. In the moment of greatest need, if we refuse to seek him in those moments, we will never be perfected in his love because it's in our weakness that he is made strong. He is not looking for us to be strong. He's not looking for us to be without flaw. He is looking for us to trust him and have great faith in those moments that it is not our perfection that makes us worthy of his love. It is his love that makes us worthy. It's his bloodshed. It's the value of his bloodshed that determines our value. 
not our perfection and not in not our greatness because we have none to offer. So applying his love, we sometimes we receive it at salvation, but then we tuck it away, you know, maybe in a display case. Right. Oh, I'm saved. Look at my look at my salvation. Mm -hmm. I trust in the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. But we don't ever bring out those china plates. I'm switching analogies now. We've gone mm -hmm. from paint to china. We never bring out the fine china and eat from it. Right. You know, Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. Mm -hmm. Bread is an everyday thing. Mm -hmm. That's why he chose that, right? right? He didn't say, I'm creme brulee. Right? He's not the creme brulee of life that you just pull out when you're dressed up and you're out for a nice meal. He is bread. He's at the breakfast table, the lunch table, the dinner table. He's at bedtime. He sure. is all the time. We need sure. to take and partake of the love of Jesus all the time. I'm just preaching to myself. That's good. That's good. <laughs> and so uh, the last day I'll close with this, and it was interesting. I asked the Lord, like, what, what is the opposite of love? You know, just, Lord, just show me, what is the opposite of love? And I thought maybe, you know, I would hear, you know, hate or this or that. But truly, what I believe he told me was indifference. That the opposite of love was like the sense of indifference or inaction or rejection. That God's love is so great that the, ab the opposite of God's love is actually rejecting his love to us. It's not hating someone else or hating God. The actual opposite of it is this indifference or this inaction or this rejection towards him. And so I start saying, like, all right, Lord, what are some of these, what are the practical ways uh, that, you know, we can encourage our church to go, you know, hashtag be the church? And I rolled my eyes a little bit. I didn't mean to totally, but I think that we all begin to put so much pressure on ourselves that we have to do certain things. Uh, but the, beauti the beautiful thing is we are led by the Holy Spirit, right. and we have the Holy Spirit to lead us. And as we, as we reflect on God's love for us in this time, and we begin to say, Lord, how can I help others in this time? I want each of you as a family to be prayerful. Yeah. What is it that God's specifically saying? Is it to call somebody? Is it to pray for somebody? Maybe it's to make the mask. I know some of the families in our church are making masks uh, for the hospitals. You know, is it, is it just sharing the gospel message with someone? Is it sending somebody a letter that you haven't sent before? What is it? But it could look very different for each and right. every person. It should. And it should look different. And it's not this one thing, well, the whole church has to go do this, or we all have to go do this. But what is God calling you through his Holy Spirit? What is he leading you towards? What are the things that he has for you? Um, and so my challenge this week is to just be intentional about receiving God's love. Yeah. Intentional about seeking his love and receiving his love. And then I gave this the challenge last week of reading Psalm 91 out loud. I, I encourage you to continue to do that. Uh, if you really read through Psalm 91, you begin to see different things that the actual psalmist is asking you to go do. Mm -hmm. Like, say this out loud, he is my refuge. Right. If you look inside, I think it's verse 3 in Psalm 91 or maybe 4. It says, actually, say, he will, is my I will refuge. I say of the Lord. I will he say of the Lord, he is my refuge. So say it. Speak it out loud. Use those scripture verses and say it out loud. And honestly, and then just ask the Holy Spirit, what is it that you have for my, me personally, my family this week, this during this time? What do you want us to go do? And we just encourage everybody to be spirit-led in yeah. that. And I'm going to bring it back around to um, last week we talked about John chapter 14, verse 27, mm -hmm. um, where Jesus says, my peace I give to you, um, or my peace I leave with you, not as the world gives do I give. Um, and so when you're seeking the Holy Spirit, let peace be your umpire. Let peace make the call. Um, just as an example, you know, I gave a shout out to the Kuhn family um, because I saw that um, their girls were making masks. And that was a thing. You know, I immediately kind of was like, okay, what do we do? What do we do? And I have fabric and I know how to sew. And I was like, okay, we have to do this. But there was a drivenness to it. There was a drop, like, the stuff has been put away for years, you know, and I began, I began stressing about th that particular thing. And I just felt the Holy Spirit say, fruit, fruit of the Spirit. Meaning, making masks is not, is not worth sacrificing your love, your joy, your peace for your family. And I knew, and you know, if I would have got that machine out and set it up on the dining table and started making masks, everything would have come to a halt. I would have stopped participating in food making, kid loving, parenting. I just would have gone right out. It just wasn't. But the Seeds Family Worship, making that video, that was hard for me. That's not my natural thing. But it was, it, I'm not saying that it was easy, but there was peace in it. I knew that it was to be done. I knew I could do it. I knew it would be help. I, it was led of the Lord. And that's what he called me to do this week. That was, that's what we did this week. Um, 
That's what I felt led to do this week. So um, that's just an example. It's using making masks. You know, it's sure. using, oh, this is a great idea. We need to do this. <laughs> Check in with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, what would you have me do? What would you have me do? And it's not that he'll call you to do easy things, but he will equip you right. to do the things that he's called you to do. And there will be peace in loving others. And so there's this distinction between am I doing good works in order to feel accepted and to feel loved, right. or am I secure in that I am loved? And because I'm loved, Lord, I'm here for you. What would you have me do? And out of that posture, posture is everything. Out of that posture, things will come and they will feel like, they will feel like, not like nothing, but they'll just, they'll feel easy because he's already positioned, he's already prepared the good works for you. If you're doing good works that he hasn't prepared for you, you're going to find that's going to, you're going to end up weary. You're going to end up, you're going to end up tired because it's not out, it's not out of love. It's out of works. So there's a really, it's like a hairline distinction. And it's a posture. It's about your posture in doing those things. So our encouragement, we're always going to encourage you to posture yourself at the feet of Jesus um, as you are and receive from him and receive the leading of the Holy Spirit in all things, in all things. And if you're, if you're diligently seeking, he's so faithful and he will lead you into good works that he has prepared. And in doing those good works, there will be love, there will be joy, there will be peace, um, and there will be there will be energy for the task. There will be energy for the task. You will not grow weary. You know, you will um, run and not grow weary. You will walk and not faint. That's right. So. Well, guys, I just as we close today, I just wanna I wanna pray for you. Uh, I know I can't see your hands, and I jumped off of Facebook Live because it was distracting me a little bit, and I wanted to be kind of in the moment uh, with everybody. Uh, so if you have a need in your life, whatever it might be, I just encourage you just to raise your hand. If it's a need for healing, maybe it's a need for salvation, maybe you've never made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, and we can do that this morning. And I want to pray for you. Uh, if you need healing in your life, you know, just slip your hand up wherever you are, whatever room you're in in your house. If you're in your bedroom, that's fine. Or if you're in the living room or family room or wherever, just slip your hand up. We just want to pray with you today. I know I can't physically see your hands like as if we were in service, but I know that the Holy Spirit has moved during our church services through Facebook Live. And so, I mean, I believe as much as it's going to happen here today. Look around your living room. If someone has their hand up, there you go. we can yeah. do that in church. Right. Look around. If someone has their hands up, gather around, gather that, person. around that person. Well, let's pray for them this morning. All right. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we just come to you. We thank you that you are love. We thank you that you are love. That you loved us so much that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to come to this earth to die for our sins. So we can have a relationship with you and live with you for all of eternity. So Father, I just ask that if there's anybody out there today who have never accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That now as I pray, Father God, as they repeat this, that as they confess with their mouth and believe in their heart that you are Lord of their life, Father. That they will just have a new birth and a new life. So if that's you today and your hand is raised, I just ask you to repeat this after me. Just say, Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you have come to save me from my sins, that you came to the cross and that you died and on the third day you rose again to wash me clean of all of my sins. And I receive you and accept you today in Jesus' name. Amen prayed that prayer for the first time, you are now a child of God in his kingdom and his family. And I just want to take a moment now and just pray for those who need healing in their life. Father, I just, you see every hand that is raised. I speak healing now in the name of Jesus over every body part, over every pinky finger, specifically pinky fingers. I don't know why, but pinky fingers, Father God, over hands, over feet, knees, backs, ankles, hips, Lord, hips. Father, you are healing hips now, even as we pray, Father God. I thank you, Lord, that you are touching people's bodies now. Your healing power is coming upon them in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your spirit, for that anointing of flowing that is coming down now in Jesus' name. Father, thank I you, pray. Father. I pray for love, peace, joy, every fruit of your Holy Spirit to manifest now in the hearts and homes of those who love you, those who are looking to you this morning, Father, I pray that they would walk in
in peace, that they would keep that peace, that they would protect it, that they would protect it, Father. Father, I pray that the love of Jesus would be applied, that it would be meditated upon, Father, that we will hold fast to it, um, to who you are, and we will, we will trust you. We will trust you, Father. We will trust in your love more than we trust our feelings, more than we trust our works, more than we trust anything that we can see. Father, we trust in you. And Father, I pray that the peace of God would rest upon every household represented now on this on this live broadcast. Every home that is represented will walk in peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you and I praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us this morning. We were, it was enjoyable to be, uh, to hang out with you guys today. And I'm not sure what will happen next Sunday. You know, continue to check back on Facebook or Instagram, even take a look at our website. Uh, if anything changes, we'll certainly post that and make that known uh, that we're making some changes to our service or how we gather or how we meet. Yeah. Otherwise, if you don't hear from us, same time, same place, yeah. 10 a.m. Sunday morning, Facebook Live. All right, guys, love you guys. We'll see you. Be blessed. Have a great week.